welcome back guys today we'll be starting laser so let us start it so let us first see what laser is so the term laser is an acronym for which stands for light so let me write laser which stands for light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation so laser stands for light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation it is a source that produces an intense concentrated and highly parallel beam of coherent light so laser action includes interaction between atoms or molecules in gas solids liquids and in electromagnetic fields so it works on quantum theory of light so let us see some properties which are associated properties of laser and we'll also see what it how it differs from ordinary light so at number 1 we have monochromaticity monochromaticity so we see that laser is highly monochromatic radiation so i will write the main points highly monochromatic radiation and the normal or conventional mon monochromatic source of light has that is a normal wavelength that is a vibgeor that has wavelengths of 5890 angstrom so that is much much we have a range for that monochrom for normal light so for normal example if you take yellow it has wavelengths of 5890 angstrom to 5893 angstrom so it has range but laser is highly monochromatic so that was our first point so at number 2 we have directionality so what it means that laser produces produces only a single direction as the photons are traveling along the optical axis of the system so let me write it so i will write like this a single direction so and we know that ordinary light travels in all possible direction so that was for ordinary light number 3 we have intensity as i have already spoken about intensity it is highly intense so laser light emits narrow beam of light so the energy of laser beam is concentrated in a small region so being small the hence the laser light laser laser beams becomes strongly intense so let me write the keyword strongly intense so normal light we know it is not that intense and number 4 we have coherence or as as i have spoken coherence the laser radiation is perfectly coherent so perfectly coherent whereas a normal beam light ordinary light is incoherent and it has many phase differences and all that so this was the properties of laser so now we'll see the basic actions basic concepts regarding transition of transitions in laser action so to understand some basic concepts of laser action at number 1 we have absorption so it is a phenomena or process where we see that an atom in the lower energy state absorbs photon and moves to the upper energy state and the transition process is known as absorption so let me so what it means suppose we have energy levels so this is our energy level e1 and this is our energy level e2 and we have atoms here and when photon strikes or 
is incident so of h mu so it moves on to the higher energy level so here the photon is lost and we see that the probability of absorption process depends on the number of atoms available in the lower state more the atoms will be here higher will be the absorption rate and on the in intensity of the light that is a photon so this was absorption and number two we have spontaneous emission so let me see what it is so let me draw the diagram so we will understand it better again we have two energy levels so E1, E2 and emission as the word we can the particles are emitted so particles are emitted and photons also moved out so let me explain it so when an atom is in an excited state that is a higher E2 state so the we know we we need to remember that the life time of atom to in a state is 10 to the power minus 8 of seconds so so this jumps to the lower energy level as the lifetime is finished or it is dead so it moves to the lower energy state by emitting a photon h mu at random so this is not a con control process it is a spontaneous or random so then this trans transition is known as the spontaneous emission as it is shown in the figure like this and the probability of emission spontaneous emission depends only on the number of atoms in the higher energy state the atoms in the higher energy state and it is independent of the light incident because it is dependent for it is after lifetime is expired the photons are emitted and emission takes place so the emitter light in this spontaneous emission is incoherent as there is a definite phase this relationship and or difference among the emitted light and number three we have the process of stimulated emission so again I will draw a figure so this is energy level diagram E1 E2 suppose emission for means higher to lower photon is incident more photons are released so now let me explain it so when an atom is in excited state that is higher energy state so it will jump to the lower energy state as the lifetime is expired and and due to, and this, and due to the inc incident of this flow photon we are Im imparting a photon so it em emits an additional photon of the same frequency so due to this an additional photon is also emitted for the same frequency so this process and stimulated emission also uh, spontaneous emission also occurs here so this emission is known as stimulated emission and we see that the, here the probability of stimulated emission is proportional to the number of atoms present here and on the intensity of light or energy of photon so here we see that the direction of propagation of energy phase and state of polarization is exactly the same as that of stimulating photon and thus we see that the two coherent sources are two coherent photons are obtained so this is the concept of stimulated emission and from here laser principle has been or derived or idea has been found out so mainly these two are more important and this is also important in laser so if you had any problems comment below and if you did like my video hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to my channel for more videos thank you